Next on News Center tonight, the Del Mar Freeway mess and the California Inferno. Hundreds of thousands of acres of timber continue to burn north of us. We'll have the latest. It is usually the fog in the Central Valley, but this time it was dust that caused a huge chain reaction wreck. And we'll hear the latest on the man who pointed a gun at a television reporter on the air. I'm Dennis Morgino with Kathy Clark. News Center tonight is next. 39 Alive, KCST TV, San Diego. Dennis Morgino. Brian Hackney Weather. Al Keck Sports. News Center 39 tonight. Good evening. It's not getting better, it's getting worse. That's the assessment of fire officials in California tonight as hundreds of thousands of acres of forest land continue to burn. The numbers are certainly worse. Lightning has caused some 1,300 fires now, charring more than 334,000 acres in California alone. This is the biggest one, more than 100,000 acres near Yosemite National Park. Thousands of firefighters from all over the country are working round the clock. It is hot, tedious, and not immediately rewarding. Yes, it gets frustrating at times. Like, you just sit there and you do a lot of work for a few hours, and it all just goes up in smoke in no time at all. You uh, hope like mad that you're going to hold that line, but there, I don't think we've ever had a traditional fire line. We're busy saving a couple of houses down the road. And the, the fire jumped through the road and, and just blocked us off. You know, we didn't have nowhere to, nowhere to go. The number of evacuations is now in the tens of thousands. 32 homes have been destroyed, many more threatened, 52 people have been injured so far, and one firefighter has been killed. All the fires the result of summer lightning. For seven hours tonight, Interstate 5 near Del Mar has resembled a parking lot, and it still is in the southbound lanes. Thousands of commuters are just getting home from work now because of a 50-pound bag of iron oxide. The bag apparently fell from a truck about 4 o'clock. It broke open, its yellow contents smeared over the southbound lanes near Carmel Valley Road. Officials thought the health risks were serious enough. They closed the freeway in both directions for the cleanup. But the cleanup truck couldn't get there for two hours because of the traffic, even with a police escort. The traffic was diverted onto Pacific Coast Highway, and that, of course, couldn't handle it, including the racetrack crowd getting out. Northbound lanes were reopened about 8 o'clock tonight. That is going smoothly. But the southbound lanes are still closed, and warnings are going out to people they should try to get to Interstate 15 to go south any way they can. The highway patrol got hundreds of calls tonight from worried family members whose North County commuters could not get to their homes south of Del Mar. They are three, four, five, and six hours late. Tonight, officials say the health risks only are to those sensitive to the iron oxide. They should see their doctors. As for anyone who drove through the stuff, wash your car. The iron oxide promotes a lot of rust. Last night, Interstate 5 near Bakersfield had its share of problems, only more deadly. Sudden dust storms obliterated visibility. Zero. 33 cars piled up in two separate accidents. One person died. Another 22 people were seriously hurt. Those accidents as well caused detours in both directions for three hours. Disappointment, frustration, outrage. Those are the feelings tonight of parents and students of the Grossmont Union High School District. Tonight, the school board would not change its mind about cutting... All the questions that I want to know the answers to. San Diego, I thank you for watching The Oprah Winfrey Show. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's movie. Join us again next week when the NFL season begins officially on ABC Monday Night Football, followed by the premiere of the Chargers Report at 9. That's next Monday night here on 10. Now, from San Diego's news leader, the city's most watched 11 o'clock news with Carol LeBeau. Michael Tuck's Perspective, Captain Mike's Weather, Larry Sacknoff on Sports, number one in San Diego. This is 10 News Nightcast. A rescue at sea. Good evening. At 11 o'clock, a fishing boat sank tonight off the Southern California coast. By the time a Coast Guard helicopter answered the distress call, 50 miles west of the Palos Verdes Peninsula, four men were in the water. The helicopter picked them out of the Pacific. They were tired and cold, but all of them are okay.
The duel for the America's Cup shifts from San Diego to New York City. That's where Mayor Maureen O'Connor is tonight, preparing for a legal battle with New Zealand's Michael Fay. Our Mark Matthews is in New York, covering the legal maneuvering. And Mark Matthews will continue reporting from New York on the America's Cup developments. His reports all this week on editions of 10 News. A lone star came back to San Diego tonight. Rolf Benerska, the former Charger and Dallas Cowboy, is now a man without a team. The Cowboys sent him off into the sunset. So is this for the last roundup? Larry Roberts is here with the story. Oh, well, Marty, it seems like only yesterday he left us, and now he's back. Benerska is back in San Diego tonight, thinking about his future after a fast turnaround trip from Dallas. Guy doesn't know whether he's coming or going there. Bernerska says he'll spend the next few days writing thank you letters to everyone who was so nice to him during his send-off to Dallas last week. And Sacknoff will have later on the sports uh, about some of his options. All right, thank one you thing we can know for certain, Rolf will land on his feet. The Labor Day holiday is a relaxing one for most people, but it's a hectic one for anyone with any notion of driving down to Mission Beach, and that includes emergency vehicles. Today was a busy one at the beach, so much so, roadblocks kept everyone except residents from driving down Mission Boulevard. But once on the sand, the sun and the water and people watching were well worth it. We're told hundreds of thousands found it a great way to spend Labor Day. Laboring in Northern California, thousands of men and women on the fire lines are making a difference. Their work means the series of forest fires may soon be out. There are only 200 fires still burning. At the peak of the crisis, more than 1,200 fires scorched more than a half million acres. And as long as there is cooler weather on the fire lines, containment of the rest looks good. It also looks good for Siamese twins spending their first full day apart. Doctors separated the infants yesterday. They were born joined at the skull. Tonight, doctors say the infants, Patrick and Benjamin Binder of West Germany, are in critical but stable condition at Baltimore's Johns Hopkins Children's Center. They're being kept unconscious until they recover from that surgery. Relief is more elusive for one local boy who suffers from AIDS as children countywide prepare for another school year. This youngster hopes that education will bridge a wide gap. Tommy learns in a week or so if he'll be allowed back in school and will have a private tutor on days when he isn't feeling well enough to attend. By the way, Tommy contracted AIDS through blood infusions needed to keep him alive. Coming up, President Nixon on President Reagan and what went wrong. A report on a one-two punch to fight balding. Then a little later, a couple planning on skating through life. A man who helped build the Berlin Wall has made an historic trip across it. Communist Party chief Eric Honecker became the first East German head of state to set foot in West Germany since the country was divided. Honecker met with West German Chancellor Helmut Kohl in Bonn. Demonstrators chanted for Honecker to tear down the wall and end his shoot-to-kill orders for those trying to escape East Berlin. Elsewhere worldwide, a West German engineer is back on his home soil tonight for the first time since he was kidnapped by Muslims in Beirut. Alfred Schmidt was released this morning eight months after his capture. The West German government says it didn't make any deals with Schmidt's kidnappers. There was speculation the Germans might vow to pressure to free one of the suspects in the hijacking of a TWA airliner in 1985. Jesse Jackson's off and running for president. Just hours after Jackson announced he would be in the race, he was out in Brooklyn stumping for supporters. Meanwhile, former President Richard Nixon is criticizing the way President Reagan handled the Iran-Contra affair. Nixon says the president's strategist made a mistake by portraying Mr. Reagan as a forgetful, fumbling, detached leader. Nixon says it would have been far better for Mr. Reagan to admit he was guilty of selling arms to Iran than to claim he was not guilty by reason of incompetence. Nixon says the weapons sale has eroded Arab confidence in the United States. A one-two punch in the battle against baldness. Dr. Michael Resnick reports that the latest weapon is a double-edged sword. Tax troubles are threatening to leave ailing big band leader Woody Herman out in the cold. Herman could be evicted from his Hollywood home by the Internal Revenue Service tomorrow. The IRS is trying to collect the million and a half dollars Herman reportedly owes in back taxes. Herman's daughter blames her father's tax problems on his former manager's gambling habit. 
On the other side of the entertainer coin is comedian Bill Cosby, the world's highest paid performer, earning at least $84 million this year and last. Following Cosby is Sylvester Stallone and rock star Bruce Springsteen. Singer Madonna is number seven on the list. Johnny Carson's number 10. Other high earners, the rock group U2, Kenny Rogers, rock singers Prince and Paul McCartney, and coming in at number 40, TV host Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> <laughs> Did that say a million dollar forecast from Mike Ambrose? We'll have him explain when we come right back. <laughs> you know, usually we feel real good about uh, introducing Captain Mike and the weather forecast, but Marty and I are really steamed, Ambrose. What's this million dollars a year stuff? Yeah. We tried to, I, frankly, I've been trying to keep that a secret from the management. Yeah, there. give I'm me Tapped the into song. the computer. Right, you can't, you can't buy into that uh, sympathy appeal. Wouldn't, you know, wouldn't that be nice, though, to make a million bucks a year? Mm. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, surely you don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> that is certainly company. not true. Good company, Mike. Yeah, KGTV would certainly be surprised if that were true. It's sort of... Uh, I was thinking Johnny Carson's salary or Sylvester Stallone's or who was at the top? Uh, the very top was Bill uh, Cosby. Bill Cosby. Eighty-four million. Yeah, Eighty-four right. million a year. Well, well, I'll tell you what. It's uh, the end of Labor Day. Labor Day unofficially uh, ends summer, but summer officially ends and fall begins on the twenty-third of this month at 6.45 in the morning. Not exactly a convenient time. And in case you haven't noticed, we have a full moon tonight. It is certainly good to see you. Let's use our Channel 10 Nightcast Thrill Cam and go out of the roof. There we go. Rather dramatically by the KGTV sign. Huh? This lifeless orb is roughly 250,000 miles away from San Diego. And if you're feeling a little weird, this could be the reason. Now let's forecast tomorrow for various it. nightcast cities. That's, That's right. It. That's it. Atlantic City, Dallas, Fort Worth, going to be cloudy. Miami's going to have rain. Orlando, still rain. Las Vegas, going to be fair over there. Seattle, fair skies. Chicago, cloudy. And Honolulu is going to be fair at 90. Let's get nightcast current as we lower the velvet curtain here on Labor Day. 68 degrees, humidity, 87%. Full moon tonight, ocean water temperature. Sunrise and sunset for Tuesday. Back to work, 627 and 705. It was a wonderful just a, just a wonderful, wonderful Labor Day weekend. If you're a visitor to San Diego, welcome. We certainly hope you enjoyed it. Now, we'll talk about San Diego. Most interesting thing on the map, there's a little tropical disturbance here that is bringing awesome amounts of rain to the Carolinas. For San Diego, I suppose we have fair skies right now. We'll see an increase by tomorrow night of the onshore flow, of the, uh, the, the clouds and the fog. will be right along the coastline here, possibly over to the mountain slopes by later on in the week. And we'll also see some high clouds floating around San Diego, Hawaii fair. Let's give some uh, Labor Day temperatures around San Diego County. All the way from Alpine, very long thermometer, Borrego, 109 in the deserts, Campo from 90 to 40. Coronado, Del Mar, El Cajon, Escondido. Let's go on to the next page. Fallbrook, Imperial Beach, Julian up in the mountains, Oceanside on the coast, Point Loma, Santee, and Lindbergh, 80 to 60. And now let's take a look at the nation. Well, if you are a Tuesday traveler, Anywhere east of the Mississippi, uh, take a rain slicker along. The flooding is expected over in the Carolinas again. That tropical storm is, uh, is beginning to approach the coast. We're not talking a hurricane, simply a tropical storm. Let's find out. Most of the west, by the way, quiet and rather pleasant. This is how warm it was. Excuse me, this is the, the forecast for tomorrow. In the 60s, the 70s around the lakes, dipping down to the Ohio Valley, the 80s and the 90s. And here is the radar, the west, basically high and dry. And uh, this is that tropical depression. It has been raining for 24 hours along the east coast and will continue to get worse. Let's go to the forecast. So glad we're in San Diego. Mostly fair tonight. So pretty one. We have that full moon out there. Tomorrow, some high clouds and fair skies. The same for Wednesday. 75 to 90. We have Balboa Park in the background, 105 in the deserts. The extended forecast into next weekend. Some morning coastal clouds, otherwise fair with average or usual temperatures and uh, it's good to see you that you have made it through the traditional end of summer in one piece we continue with we, marty and Karen we take sack. that back that was a million dollar forecast thank you that's yes. that's what it was and just if you make a million dollars it's fine yeah. you make a million dollars a year well, we're not talking about that. Are you kidding? <laughs> All right. Uh, some ball players do, though. You know, they do. That's the Char true. Chargers made some final cuts today, and, uh, you know, the rosters are down to 45 because opening day is next Sunday. Also, the Padres are looking up in the standings, and uh, why don't we check that baseball again? Sports is next. Stay with us. Football cut down day. It's that, that dreaded day 
for players whose jobs are on the bubble. That kind of means that jobs can go either way. That's what the bubble means. Take a look at uh, the Chargers cuts. Quarterback Rick Neuheis a little fought pretty hard with Mark Vlasic for the number three spot behind Dan Fouts and Mark Herman uh, was cut. And uh, so that means that Vlasic is staying. He was their fourth round draft choice. Wide receiver Bobby Johnson, they traded a draft choice to the Giants for him, and now they cut him. So that means that Timmy Ware and Jimmy Holland have made it. Wide receiver Anthony Hancock, they just picked him up from the waiver wire when Kansas City dropped him. I really hope they got Kansas City's game plan out of him, too, for Sunday's game, because that's who the Chargers are playing. Uh, Monty Bennett is gone. Walter Harris is gone. Defensive back Gardner Williams. Jeffrey Jackson. Tyrone Stowe. Tight end Malcolm Moore had a good camp, but Chargers just don't need any more tight ends. And uh, offensive line Broderick Thompson also had a good camp, but there's just no more room on the roster for them. Players put on the injured reserve. Linebacker Woody Lowe, he'll have knee surgery tomorrow. Jeff Walker, Kurt DiGiacomo, Keith Baldwin, and Nelson Jones. And then one of the more familiar names to Sandy Akins, who got cut today, and if you watch the top of the broadcast, you know that Rolf Berners didn't last too long with the Dallas Cowboys, even though he made his only attempt in that game over the weekend against Houston, a 24-yard field goal. And, you know, he's making around $260,000 this year, and maybe, I don't know, maybe that's got something to do with the Cowboys deciding to go with Roger Ruzek instead. All right, so if a team claims him off the waiver wire, they have to pay him the $260,000. If he clears waivers, which he'll, uh, he'll know about in 24 hours, that's how long you have to stay on the waiver wire, another team can pick him up, and then he can renegotiate a contract for a lesser amount of money. Padres are only a game out of fifth behind the Dodgers, only two and a half out of fourth behind the Braves. Tomorrow could be the day Padres could get out of the cellar tomorrow night. Uh, they beat the Braves today, 11-4, five run first. Carmelo Martinez, line went out in the right field, and uh, Tony Gwynn came in to score. You know, when you think about it, Padres were like, what, 12-42 uh, and 42 on June 4th. Look at Templeton's swing right there. It's like he could have used a nine iron for that one. Talk about hitting a low pitch. Cruck and Reddy scored. Chris Brown hit his 11th today. The Padres won at 11-4. Elsewhere in the National League, Cincinnati beat Los Angeles 3-2. Houston was the winner over San Francisco. The Astros are four and a half out. And what would a game be if the umps didn't check a baseball? or a glove or a bat. Roger Craig said that Mike Scott was scuffing the baseball tonight, so they checked it, and watch Scott. He's going to rub his glove. He's going to go to the shirt, and they're saying, see? See, there's something in his shirt. There's definitely something. He was just faking everybody out. They couldn't find a thing, and finally, Roger Craig keeps arguing about it. He finally got thrown out of the game. They didn't find anything on Mike Scott. Houston won the game 4-2. to two. Elsewhere, Montreal beat St. Louis 9-2. The Cards lead by 3.5 uh, in the East because Philadelphia beat New York. And Pittsburgh over Chicago 3-2. And Gene Michael, the Cubs manager, says that he doesn't want to come back next year. Uh, he, doesn't, he told reporters that, which was really kind of stupid because as soon as Dallas Green finds out that, he'll probably fire him tomorrow. Uh, Blue Jays got a scare today because, you know, they're leading the American League East, but barely over Detroit. And their star player, George Bell, who's having an MVP kind of year, got hit today. Bill Wegman hit him right in the face. Mm. And he never goes down. I mean, are we talking tough here? I mean, he's okay, so I can you see you say that, but he never went down. I mean, can you imagine getting hit in the face and not going down, going, oh, please help. It didn't happen. Bell says he's okay. A contusion of the left cheek and a bloody nose. And that was it. Toronto won it 5-3. to three. Elsewhere, uh, Detroit beat uh, Baltimore 12-4. to four. So the Tigers are a half game out. New York over Boston. Yankees five out. Minnesota won. Twins lead the West by three. Uh, Oakland beat Texas. Kansas City was a winner. Seattle six. Cleveland four. College football tonight. Michigan State uh, beat USC 27 to 13. Big upset at the U.S. Open tonight. Fourth seeded Boris Becker is gone. Brad Gilbert beat him in five sets. And that was after Becker took a two sets to one lead. Or two sets to none lead, I should say. I mean, Becker's running away with this thing. In fact, he said he was having an easy time of it, and then he made some mistakes. Gilbert cashed in on him and came back to win it in five sets. Other seats to go. Number four, Hanna Malikova, upset by Claudia Kode Kilsch. And Malikova was penalized a game for smashing a racket against the scoreboard. Zena Garrison is gone, but other than that, Martina won, Steffi won, Jimmy won, McEnroe won, they all won. Aside from those people I told you who lost. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it looks like a carbon What does that make sense, huh? It's incredible. Yeah. Isn't Thanks. that something? Really? If they didn't win, they lost. You're amazing. I, it's, it is. It's amazing. <laughs> Skating into marriage when we come back. Until today, a Georgia couple had just been spinning their wheels, but they decided to take the plunge and take their vows where they first met, at a roller rink. After rolling up to a makeshift altar, they said their I do's, and then with rings on their fingers and wheels beneath their toes, the newlyweds rolled away for the traditional first dance. Misdiagnosed is retarded tomorrow at 10 on Sally.
Good evening, I'm Marty Levine. And I'm Denise Yamada. Topping our news at 11 o'clock, they are calling it Black Monday or the crash of 87. But tonight, the effects of the fall on Wall Street are being felt around the world. The Hong Kong stock market didn't even open. And in early trading, the Tokyo market fell more than 2,500 points. In London, everyone was selling in what was described as near panic trading. Now, following our newscast at 11.30, NBC News will present a special on Black Monday, what happened today on Wall Street and what the future may hold after today's fall. Wall Street analysts say some of today's panic came in the wake of the U.S. retaliation in the Persian Gulf. American warships, including two based in San Diego, bombarded Iranian oil platforms, two of them, and troops boarded a third platform, destroying radar and communications equipment. The Pentagon says today's action was in retaliation for last week's Iranian attack on an oil tanker flying the American flag. Iranian leaders promised decisive retaliatory action. Defense Secretary Caspar Weinberger said the U.S. is not seeking any further confrontation. Around the world, the attack was greeted with a mixture of welcome and worry. An Arab official said it was about time the United States disciplined Iran. But shipping agents say it could make things even worse in the Gulf. Nancy Reagan is recuperating rapidly from breast cancer surgery. As a matter of fact, she is recovering so well that President Reagan says she's ahead of schedule and may be released from Bethesda Naval Hospital sooner than was expected.